just what is lurking in the eye of Sauron? A relic of Middle-earth's past? Or something much, much darker? Welcome to SETI Astro. So trying to find something to uh, image, I used uh, What's in My Sky and was poking around at some of the NGC objects and, and pulled up Stellarium as well. And, and, I, and I saw this little galaxy label that said Eye of Sauron. So uh, what self-respecting nerd would not have to point their telescope at this object? And to boot, I, uh, when I was using the, the framing mosaic wizard and SGP, I, I saw another little spiral galaxy off to the side. I was like, this, this is perfect. Uh, so went on a little adventure, not knowing what I was even going to uh, find in the image, which I think is all, all the better. So for luminance, I actually got about 12 hours of luminance data, uh, which, which was really nice. I was able to just see right away the, the swirls around uh, the, the Eye of Sauron Nebula here. There's this really other great uh, spiral double spiral um, galaxies you could they got to be interacting it looks like there's two cores and they're kind of spiraling around there there must have just been a merger uh, recently we'll look at the all the galaxies later and then you know there's this other just great starburst looking galaxy off as well and the and I thought the stars were were framed nicely too uh, I, I like the diffraction spikes more and more from the from the imaging note for RG and B I actually messed up. I, I normally shoot bin two for RGB, and I and I had a half of them in, in bin one. Um, anyways, uh, I, I took the best of what whatever looked best. So a total of three hours. Probably only used about an hour and a half uh, of color data. The the red uh, definitely more prominent in the core versus the the blue that had a little more distend it throughout. And then for hydrogen, I did get uh, 12 hours of 15 minute exposures. And hyd hydrogen's interesting, right? The, the galaxy's pretty dim in hydrogen, uh, ex except like down in the core here. And then over on the, what kind of look like a starburst galaxy here, uh, just dotted with, with hydrogen knots, which I was expecting and, and pretty hopeful. So the next thing was really making sure that all the gradients were moved, Everything was nice and sharp, and then uh, do continuum subtraction. Utilizing my continuum subtract utility script, I was able to, to pull out just the hydrogen emission, right? I had a pretty pretty good subtraction here. And now in the core, you could really see just a, a lot of stuff going on, right? Uh, there, there are diffraction spikes because the center core is, is just that bright. Um, so you, you got to do a little little post processing here, right? A lot of this is is not hydrogen, especially where the gradients were. Uh, so a, a common method is stretch it and subtract off the median value. And then I did a little uh, star removal of some of those star artifacts, leaving down just the, the 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 pure hydrogen emission here around the center of the ion uh, center of the eye of Sauron, and. The thing that I saw right away was kind of this arm here, and then coming out from the lower left, there's also this streamer, and it kind of goes into this twirly knot here, which which I thought was really really cool, and and we'll look at that a lot more in detail later, and then for the for the other galaxy again, uh, what I was expecting right just knot it with a bunch of hydrogen and hydrogen gas kind of. Uh, kind of swirled throughout from from interactions within the galaxy. So instead of doing uh, SPCC, I actually opted to do linear fit for the uh, the starless data versus SPCC with the, the stars data. I thought there was just more color that looked like it was coming through a little bit more, and then it was a matter of of processing. So this is just the RGB, and you could tell there's some some nice structure here in the one galaxy and then the ISR on over here and then that other little spiral galaxy. And as always, when you're processing, you go through a lot of uh, steps to bring out what you want, darkening the background. Uh, I added in the hydrogen data. So I screened the continuum subtracted hydrogen into the red channel. So that brought uh, 
the hydrogen knots into the galaxies and into the Iosauron here. And then there's just a little bit more, uh, you know, stretching and cleaning up and doing a little local intensity. I did um, merge some luminosity back from the luminance after all this stretching to redefine like this little this little galaxy core off over here. And this is where the, the starless version uh, ended up for the for the RGB. Oh, I also forgot to mention I I did add the luminosity back once I uh, got the, the color pretty much where I, I, I wanted it. So so here was the, the raw color, just the RGB, and that was adding the, the luminosity channel back, back into it. And there was adding the hydrogen into it and continuing on with the processing. Now for the stars, I just uh, channel combination, the stars only images and ran it through my star stretch script. And then I also had the luminance stars and I definitely wanted to incorporate the luminance stars in with the RGB stars in case there's any structure that was removed from any of the galaxies during the star extraction. So that's what I did here. And then I just uh, tweaked it a little bit with curves to kind of get the, the stellar brightness where, where I wanted it. And then finally screening the starless and starry, uh, got, got the final image here, right? And uh, just just so many galaxies in this image. It is, it is pretty crazy and there's one I, I really like it's really it's right next to the super bright star but you could tell it has this really great like s shape i just saw that kind of poking through in the dim background and then the the structure of some of these is really interesting too again the the double nucleus spiraling going on in this galaxy this one here is really weird looking uh there's there's definitely some merger merger happening there down in the lower, lower left, there's also uh, a, a big tidal stream on this galaxy down here. And then just all throughout the image is just these faint, fuzzy knots of really, really, really distant galaxies. Some of them exhibiting some really deep red structure in there. So I knew that there was gonna be a lot to, a lot to look at here once we start digging into what's actually in this image. So quickly in uh, what's in my image, I had a toggle just for galaxies and quasars, and you can see in the little thumbnail there's ju just a bunch, but there's one sitting at uh, a redshift of 4.6, and it was really, really faint, so I had to turn the auto stretch on too, so it's it's really stretched, but but it's there. And you may be thinking, why is it not like red? It's because it wasn't in any of the red it wasn't in any of the, the color data I had, right? So this was just captured in the in the luminance data because it is so dim, it, it it just wasn't picked up in the in the RGB images. So it looks white just because I only had luminance data uh, when it, when something's that that dim. But yeah, redshift of 4.6. Um, the the light from that was traveling 12.4 billion years. It, it makes those photons like three times the age of the Earth, going back to going back quite quite a ways in the the history of the universe. We have NGC 4151, which is the the Eye of Sauron galaxy. There's 4156, which is that spirally one. The the really weird one is UGC 7188. Our nice spiral starburst is NGC 4145. And our cool little uh, S-shaped one here isn't isn't even in Simbad, so so we got to do a, a different kind of search for that. It is cataloged in uh, Vizier, and in Ned, there's there's really not a whole lot of information, no redshift or anything, which is which is always unfortunate. And it is really far out; it's it's barely resolved in the in the DSS survey. But let's go ahead and and turn our attention to the the ISR on uh, galaxy here, so. Remember, I, I said that there was just all this cool looking emission structure. It, it kind of makes its own S, S shape here, especially that there and then kind of the, the knot structure going off there. Back in 2011, uh, astronomy had 
an article for NGC 4151 and in the active black hole in the center of it. And they, they have this image here, which is a combination of X-ray data from Chandra and optical data from the Isaac Newton group of telescopes down in uh, La Palma and uh, radio emissions as well. So let's go ahead and, and zoom up right up to the core of the Eye of Sauron and let's overlay the continuum subtracted data on it. And now let's go ahead and fade in the professional image on top of mine. And you can see, here we'll go at about 50%. All these knots and nodules line right on up with the actual uh, optical data from La Palma. And that thing going down to the lower left is this jet emission from the active galactic nucleus. And in my image, there was um, kind of a gap between the center, uh, kind of just darkening from, from like the continuum subtraction, and then there was a, a little bit of objects kind of off on a limb here. And even in the La Palma image, you could see that same arc. Uh, and, and I don't know what that arc is, but it's it's in their data too. The the, the same arc of stuff right here that's, that's in mine. So that is just really, really cool. And then here's just the the full full zoomed in on that professional data and uh, it's it's rotated a little differently but I just find it so cool that I was able to capture this active galactic nucleus activity in the Eye of Sauron from a black hole uh, from this active galactic nucleus uh, through the the continuum subtraction of the hydrogen data just I was not expecting that at all I had no idea this stuff was even in here I just Love this, love this little hobby that you can uh, make your own personal discoveries and, and find it corroborated by actual professional observations. And, and just, I don't know, just something about exploring the cosmos in this way is so interactive and, and so intriguing to me. I've also updated Astrobin with my Eye of Sauron Galaxy. And if you do the mouse over here, it does a, a zoom in of the galaxy with a little overlay of the professional data and my own continuum subtracted data. So I think that's uh, cool. I got a write up on all the acquisition details here, a little uh, movie showing the core of the Eye of Sauron, and then some uh, close in crops and some other little write ups here on some, some things I, I found interesting. I've also updated my website, studyastro.com, under galaxies for the Eye of Sauron as well. It has a mouse over zoomable image so you can explore. The little movie of the professional data overlaid on my continuum subtracted data, a link to the article, and uh, a, a link to Astrobin as well. Well, I hope you guys found something cool in this video and it compels you to go out and shoot some uh, narrow band on galaxies this upcoming galaxy season. We're already in March. Hope everybody had some clear skies. Please comment, like, and subscribe.